King's kids, you are dismissed to your classes. We have any birthdays today? <laughs> Shelly Grimes turned 25. Stand up if you have a birthday today. We'd like to recognize you. Stay right there, Shelly. Don't run off. All right. This is my happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. God bless. <laughs> You don't want me to break out the guitar and really get down with it. I do my country version. Happy birthday. <laughs> Got that twang in it. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Been battling with a little bit of allergies. All those farmers cutting corn and haying and Mike Burke's putting out that turkey stuff. <laughs> It, uh, I come in this morning with like four different messages going through my mind and uh, trying to settle on where God would want me to go. When I come in this morning, I, uh, I had just a little bit of, of free time just for a moment, and I just, I, I just said, Lord, I want the message of the hour. I've been preaching so long that, uh, seriously, I just want to be honest with you, I've been preaching so long that I can really pull a scripture out and we can talk about it. You know, it's just, it's just, I've read the Bible through at least five times and I, I can pull a scripture out and, and we can talk about it. But when you have the word for the hour, that rhema word, that anointed word from God, it begins to move. And this morning, uh, I really felt like as we're on the revival rebirth series, uh, that we should go to, uh, second Kings chapter 20. And, uh, Y'all have to forgive me, but I forgot my glasses again in my office, so I'm going to read on the screen here. 2 Kings chapter 20, verse number 1. We're going to read down to verse number 11. 2 Kings chapter 20, verse number 1. And uh, this story is also found in Isaiah, I believe the 20, 22nd chapter of Isaiah. But uh, the Bible says, in those days, Hezekiah was sick near death. And Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amos, went to him and said to him, Thus saith the Lord, set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Now, I don't know about you, but when you get those kind of words, when the prophet shows up and says, hey, you're going to die and you're not going to live, man, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, I mean, that's when every Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, come on, somebody. Any, any, any Bible-believing, Bible-thumping, devil-casting-out person stands up and says, oh. And so he says, you are going to die, and you are not going to live. Then he turned his face toward the wall like this. And he prayed to the Lord, saying, remember now, O Lord, I pray, how I have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart, and have done what was good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly, and it happened before Isaiah had gone out into the middle of the court that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Return and tell Hezekiah. In other words, I changed my mind. Did you know sometimes you can change God's mind? Hold on just a minute. Well, you can't change God's mind. Once God said something, that, that's it. But, 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 but listen, there are some times when God says, hey, change my mind. Come on now. Hey, I'm going to preach whether y'all like it or not. There's sometimes God says, hey, come on, come, come, come to church and pray and change my mind. Go find a prayer closet. Fast for three days. Change my mind. That's not my message. Okay. And Hezekiah wept bitterly and the happy before Isaiah had gone out into the middle of the court that the word of the Lord came to him saying, Return and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, your father, 
I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. How many knows that crying and praying is very important? Three people. Crying and praying is, listen to me, it's very important. I will heal you. Whew, I like this. On the third, there's something about that third day. On the third day, you shall go up to the house of the Lord, and I will add to you 15 years. <laughs> and I will deliver you this city from the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for my own sake and, and for the sake of my servant, if I could say it like this. And I will defend the United States of America for my own sake and for the sake of my people and my church. Then no tyrant will come in and take over what I have built. Then no communist, no socialism will take it in place of me. I will be God. Hallelujah. <laughs> then Isaiah said, take a lump of figs. So they took it and laid it on the bull, and he recovered. And Hezekiah said to Isaiah, what is the sign that the Lord will heal me? I'm going to preach this in just a minute, y'all. Just hang on. And then I shall go up to the house of the Lord the third day. Then Isaiah said, this is a sign to you from the Lord that the Lord will do the thing which he has spoken. Shall the shadow go forward 10 degrees or backward 10 degrees? Back then they had a sundial to tell, tell what time it was. And Hezekiah answered, it is an easy thing for the shadow to go down 10 degrees. No, but lest the shadow go backward 10 degrees. Look at your neighbor and say, only God can give you time. I'm going to preach in a minute. Hang on. Only, you can get back a lot of things, but you can't get back time. Hang on. Only God can do that. So Isaiah the prophet cried out to the Lord, and he brought the shadow 10 degrees backward, and by which it had gone down on the sundial of Ahaz. Father, let me preach this like you gave it to me in my prayer closet. And Father, begin to move in this place right now. Heavenly Father, begin to overshadow and begin to touch. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Now, in this story here, it's a very, very interesting story. And I spent 26 years on the evangelistic field preaching this story right here about Hezekiah uh, uh, being, being announced to die, but God come in and give him 15 more years. And uh, also talked about certain different things. But when, when you read this story here, the Bible said that the prophet Isaiah goes into the king's palace. And when you read the backstory on it, King Hezekiah had gotten sick and had some boils come up on his body. And he had been laying in bed and with a fever and, and, and uh, most of the uh, doctors and everybody who studied everything come in and looked at him and, and said, you know, we have uh, lanced everything we can lance. We pulled this out. And, and, and I mean, every time we do, another one starts up over here and, and you just keep collecting all of these sores uh, upon your body. And we don't know exactly what's going on, uh, but we just don't give you a whole lot of time. And so he listened to everybody and everybody's saying he ain't got too much time he's going to die. How many knows that when you uh, uh, listen to what people are saying about you, sometimes you believe it? Sometimes you got to get away from the negativity. Come on, somebody. If you got friends that just want to tell you what you want to hear, they're not your friends. They're just there because they're waiting on you to do something for them. But you need to find somebody who don't care whether you like it or not, but will tell you the truth. And, and find somebody that will absolutely speak that truth into your life. And so Hezekiah is sick. Everybody's talking about how bad it is and he's going to die and he's not going to make it. And they're talking about all these things and he's listening to it. He finally conforms to it and his, in his mind he's getting ready. But it doesn't really seem real until the prophet of God walks in. Now this is the man who gets a hold of God. 
Listen to me. This is a man who, when he walks into your room, you cannot wait to see him because, because, because you know that he's been with God. And Isaiah walks into the door. He walks straight up to Hezekiah's bed, and he says, get your house in order, buddy, because you're going to die, and you're not going to live. You're not going to make it out of this. I come to tell you what my God said, but my God's giving you a chance. Get everything in order. Get everything right because you're not going to make it. He turns, and he walks out, and the Bible says that Hezekiah, he turned without a prophet of God, without a praise team, without a Sunday morning service, without a Bible study plan, without TBN, without the internet, without an app. He crawls, he, he, he leans over and turns against the wall and the Bible said with his tears and the Bible said he cried out and he said, God, I've served you. Come on, somebody. He put it in God's hand. He said, I've lived for you. I've served you and this is where I am. And Heavenly Father, Father, I come to you, and I tell you that I give my life to you. Now I want you to do something about it. And God never even spoke to Hezekiah, never even said a word. Amen. Have you ever just knelt down and prayed and didn't hear God say nothing? I mean, I mean, I mean, you, you cried until your gut hurt. You cried until your eyes were swelled up. The tears had flowed out for so long and so many days that you couldn't see. Your nose is, uh, is clogged up. Your, your, your cheeks are all flushed and your belly hurts. And you cried out and still you don't hear God say anything. Yeah, come on. The Bible said, even though God didn't say nothing to, to Hezekiah, Listen, this is how God is. Listen, listen. This is how God is. God works the same way all the time. Listen, listen. Now, he used Isaiah to deliver the word. Now, in order to make the word right, he had to go get Isaiah again. So, so Isaiah got out into the middle court of the town. In, in the town center, the town square, he gets out in the middle. And when he gets out there, I, I, <coughs> Isaiah hears God say, hang on. Come on. Hezekiah has just changed my mind. Yes. <laughs> yes. I want you to go back and tell him, listen, this is very important. I'm going to give him 15 more years. Now, hang on. Wouldn't we rather have, say, have God say, I'm going to give you 100 more years? <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, maybe Hezekiah was 85, I don't know. Maybe he's going to give him to it. I, 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 but he said, listen, this, this is very important. He said, he said I tell him I'm going to give him 15 more years. Hezekiah walks back up into the hospital room. He says, uh, can you tell Titus Weller? No, I'm just, <laughs> he, he walks into the hospital room. Into the bed of the of the castle, he 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 comes back in and he looks at Hezekiah and he said, "I need to tell you that God said that He's heard your prayer." He's heard your cry. He has seen your tears. I need to tell somebody right now, don't you ever give up and don't you ever quit. I want to tell somebody right now that when you feel so passionate, if God told you he's going to do something, he'll do something. Don't you give up and don't you let the enemy rob you of what God said he's going to do. Turns to the wall and just him on the wall, and he cries out. And he said, Tell him I've seen his tears, and tell him I've heard his cry, and tell him I'm going to give him 15 more years. Very, very important. Listen, 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 listen. Very, very, very important. Listen to this, to this word. Now, God spoke the word, and then he took, and the Bible said they took fig leaves and put up on the boil. Now, I need to tell somebody God works in so many different ways. Some people says, well, if God said he's going to do it, then I don't need to go to a doctor. Okay, then don't go to a doctor. Or sometimes uh, the doctors can help you. I need you to understand that in this passage of Scripture, uh, God spoke it, but then he took the herbs uh, and he took the fig leaves uh, and he put it upon him. When God said it, he could have done just like that right there. But he took the fig leaves uh, and he put it upon his body. He said, wrap his body in this. And so Hezekiah says, okay, since you're doing this, what is 
is the sign, listen to me, because he didn't feel it immediately. He didn't jump up out of bed like some of them did. He wasn't a blind man that could see. He wasn't a deaf man that they could just hear. He wasn't a lame man that got up and walked. He was still laying in the bed, and there were still bulls on his body, and they put the fig leaf. And so he said, what is the sign? What is the sign? That I'll be healed. One of the biggest questions of the church today is we come in and we're always trying to find the sign. Come on, somebody. We're trying to find a sign. Some, 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 some comedian said, here's your sign. Praise God. And we're always trying to find a sign. I need a sign. What is the sign of the times? I need a sign. I want a sign. I want to see it. I want a sign. I need to see a sign. And Jesus even spoke it this way. He said, they're always looking for a sign. And he said, but this is the sign that I'll give unto you. That as a prophet Jonah went into the belly of the well for three days, so shall the son of man go into the belly of the earth and come back. I need to tell somebody, the sign's already been given. But he said, I'll tell you what. He said, we're going to take, we're going to move the sun up or we're going to move it back. Whatever you ask to do is what's going to happen. And Hezekiah said, well, it'd be a whole lot easier to move forward. But let's go ahead and get something back. Come on, somebody. Let's go ahead and get something back. He said, so, so let it move back. So the Bible said that Hezekiah cried unto God, and the Bible said that all of a sudden, listen, that the sundial moved 10 degrees backwards. Now, when I look at this, praise God, and I read, some have different opinions, but, 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 but a my most accurate seeing of it is a 10 degree of a sundial is about 40 minutes. And so let me talk on 40 just for a minute, because it was just 40 minutes. Well, why not? 40 days. Why not 40 years? Let me tell you something. If God can create this thing we're living in today, stand on nothing and spoke to nowhere and create where we're at today in six days, then I tell you what, he can do a lifetime in 40 minutes. 40 minutes. Anytime you see 40, it's a sign of testing. It, was, it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. The Bible said that Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Anytime you see the, the, the number 40, it's a testing. The Bible said Israel went into the desert for 40 years. And here this man is sitting there, and God takes back the test. I need to preach just for a minute. And he takes back, and he moves back 40 minutes. Some of us are wishing, I wish I could take that back. I wish I didn't say that on Facebook. I wish I'd have just shut my mouth. I wish I'd have just kept on walking. I wish I hadn't answered. I wish I hadn't done that. There's so many times that some of us go through different things. We think, man, wouldn't it be amazing to just go back? And some of you don't need to go back 40 days. Some of you probably need to go back two minutes because it only takes two minutes to go crazy on some of y'all. <laughs> I mean, some of y'all so short-fused. Everybody say, I love the preacher. Y'all so short-fused. You've had people to, to kick you, to stab you in the back, uh, to lie on you uh, and never be a true friend. Uh, and you're seeking for the truth. Uh, you're trying to find somebody in your life uh, that will be real. Uh, and you spend most of your life uh, trying to defend yourself uh, on everybody wants something you got uh, or trying to get things uh, that you just so short-fused uh, that, praise God, uh, you just want to get up in the middle of everybody uh, and you don't care. And God says, hang on just a minute. Uh, I'm going to give you 15 more years. Uh, but still yet, I'm going to take 40 minutes. Yeah. Hmm. See, 14 is prophecy. 15 is healing. Not only is it healing, but five is a number for grace. Now, I don't know about you, 
but we all need some grace. Some people say, well, them old grace preachers, they're talking about that grace. Okay, then, why don't we just call a prayer line and let's go back to the law, an eye for an eye? A tooth for a tooth? Oh, no, I take grace, preacher. Because, see, the old law says uh, that if a man steals something, uh, then cut his hand off. The Bible says that if a man look on a woman to lust, then thrust out the eye that he's lusting with. <laughs> you better hope you've done it with one. <laughs> because you're going to get them both out, buddy. Ooh, that's the law. But grace says, I'm going to step into the middle of it. And everything that comes, I'm going to reflect. And when it gets on them, I'm going to whisper, hey, I got this. It's okay. I died on the cross for you. It's okay. Get back up. Quit being a wine baggy. Be, get back up. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay, I'm going to give you 40 minutes. <laughs> Hezekiah's in a place. He needs God to move. He is the ruler, and God needs him. Yeah. And the only way to get him is to have something to come. Let, my God, let me tell somebody something. Some of you are sitting back thinking, God, why did you do this to me? And it's never been about you. It's been about somebody else. But our problem is, is we're always crying because it's us. Why did you let this happen? Why do I have to go through this? Why am I have to do this? And God said, listen, hold on, hold on just a minute. It was never about you. I knew you could withstand it because I'll never let no more come upon you than what you can bear. But I will make a way of escape. It's never been about you. It's been about your cousin. It's been about your brother. It's been about your sister. Come on, somebody. It's been about Sister Long tongue, uh, sitting in the church. Uh, it's been about Brother Blabbermouth. Uh, they can't keep his mouth shut. Uh, it's never been about you. It's always been about somebody else. We're always whining. Hezekiah didn't say, oh God. He reminded him who he was. He said, listen, I'm the one calling out your name. I'm the one raising up my voice. I'm the one crying in the middle of the night for those lost souls to be saved. I'm the one calling out. If I'm not here, who's going to do it? Come on, sometimes you just got you just got to tell God. Somebody says, I don't want to do that. Some of you probably have. And you've heard somebody tell you, oh, don't you talk to God like that. He'll strike you dead. Listen to me. Sometimes God just needs you to be real. I'm so sick and tired of fake and phony. That's what the message Bible said that the Pharisees is. It says, it says it's phony Pharisees. They just come in phony. I'm so sick and tired of fake and phony. I want, I want to be able to approach my God, who's a big God, by the way, who can withstand or take anything. I want to approach him. I want to beat on the altar sometime. I want to kick the altar sometime. Sometimes I want to say, where are you at? So just coming in. Oh, dear gracious Heavenly Father. Sometimes we think if we change our voice, it'll get his attention. Some people say, yo, dude. And see, Hezekiah was about to do something to face some things, and he needed to know the whole backlash of the story of what was going to be the sign Listen to this. Before he entered into the temple on the third day. And God said, you want me to move time forward or you want me to move time backward? See, some of us think, well, if I go ahead and move forward, I can get past this. Some of us think, well, if I go ahead and go backwards, I can redo this. 
So God wasn't, this wasn't, a, this wasn't a trick question. He wanted to know what he thought because God said, I'll do whatever you want me to do. I need to tell somebody right now, you better listen to this preacher right here this morning. When you come to God, you better tell him your heart. Don't you beat around it. Don't you try to tell him what you think somebody else wants to hear or somebody else wants you to be. Some people think, well, preacher, when I quit drinking and cussing and fighting, matter of fact, they think that's the only sins in the church is cussing, driving, fighting, and drinking. That's what I was told growing up. Well, if you cuss, fight, and drink, you're going to go to hell. Praise God. Well, the Bible says if you hate your brother, you'll go to hell. The Bible says if you lie, you'll go to hell. Come on, somebody. There's more sins than cussing, fighting, and drinking. But we want to think when I get it all worked out, I'm going to come to church. And the church has put up such a persona for so many years that they're pointing their finger at them. Tell them, when you get it right, you come on in and be a part of us. Then you can look like us, dress like us, be a Cleveland Browns fan like us. Ooh. I'd bow my chest out like a banny hen or hen, rooster. Ain't no hen. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Take that hat off. Don't you laugh like that. <laughs> Edit that out. Move it. I don't care what you do. <laughs> Dear God. Here's a cow has a platform. That God has put him on to change the direction. And some of us think that we have nothing. We're just nothing. I got a 40 hour week job, barely have a pension. I went to college for this degree and couldn't get this job, so I had to take a secondary job. Most of us go to college for something and we wind up doing something else. How many knows what I'm talking about? We spend so much money on this field and we get there and we realize that this field really isn't who we are. And sometimes we chase stuff for so long trying to wait. But Hezekiah had a platform. I need to tell somebody, Pastor Anna, can you come to the piano? You may not be able to sing, but, 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 but play for me for a little bit. He's got a platform that God wants to use him. And this platform is a 15-year platform. God said, I'm going to put you. Listen, I need somebody to hear me. I'm not saying you're going to die in 15 years, but hang on just a minute. Listen. He's got a 15-year platform, and he's going to take 40 minutes back. Now, listen, this is kind of funny, but I thought about this. If you could take 40 minutes of your life back, Would you run from that dope house when you were 17 years old? Would you turn down that first drink of liquor at 14 to 15 years old? Would you stay in church when you got saved at 9, 10? Would you walk away? And, and listen, listen, in 40 minutes, your life can change. Forty minutes. What would it be in your whole life that you you could just tell God, roll the sun back? Forty minutes. Forty minutes. Forty minutes, and not I don't want to redo it, but forty minutes like it never happened. Give me a platform. <laughs> he might have took 40 minutes back but the next day when it come he could get up and say hey I'm still 40 minutes behind and the next day hey I'm still 40 minutes behind come on somebody and the, come on come on he, 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 he said he said I'm gonna get it back to you 
You can get your car back when you lose it from the bank. You can get your house back when you lose a mortgage. You can get another wife. You can get another husband. You can get another Harley. But you can't get time. That's something you'll never get back. But my God can give you back time and restoration and power and glory. I he can give you back what nobody else can give you. And then he can add 15 more years. Now some says, okay, Isaiah didn't die until 15 years later. But what if God said, okay, Isaiah, you're really not, you're really not supposed to die until 30 years later. But, but I'm going to add 15 to it. What's going to happen in this revival rebirth? Because every so often there's a rebirth, a revival. Don't miss this move. All over America, do not miss this move. And do not get so high and mighty and, 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 and thinking upon yourself that it's just a Pentecostal thing. But it's not. It's a Baptist thing and a Methodist thing and a Presbyterian thing. I need to tell somebody it's a God thing. And God is moving. Just 40 minutes. Some look at some of the stuff you've been going through. Been doing this for five years. But there was just a 40 minute span in there that could have changed everything. You might be suffering for your wrongdoings for five or six years because you're stubborn. And you won't just turn it all over to God. Well, preacher, I made this mistake. It's been 15 years, and God's still making me pay for it. The devil is a lie. I need to tell you something. The Bible says he takes your sins and throws them as far as the east is to the west, and he remembers them no more. When you confess unto God, he does not remember your sin. The devil is a lie. But I'm here to tell somebody this morning that God is willing to give you back 40 minutes. My God, who am I talking to? God's willing to give you back 40 minutes of your time that the devil lied to you. You. He lied to you. He told you everybody's smoking this. All the cool kids are drinking this. Everybody who wants to be everybody is sleeping around before they get married. Anybody knows anything that you just uh, find a woman and sleep with her for two or three years or find out if you're compatible. The devil is a lie. God said, I'm going to take 40 minutes of that wrong thinking. Amen. It's called the law of first truth. The first truth. The law of first truth. It's what you hear for the first time in your life. You always remember. That's why they say that the most important time of a child's life is the first five years because it's the first thing that they see in their life that they remember. So I need to tell you, the Bible says train up a child in a way that they will go. That when they get older, listen to me, he said that they would never get out, but he said that when they depart, I'll come and get them. Come on, somebody. When they get out into the crack house, I'll kick the doors down and I'll come and get them. When they get in an abusive relationship, I'll be the strong arm and I'll knock the devil out and come and get him. When everybody lied to him, I'll rescue them. When they don't have nothing to live for and want to take their own life, I'll stand in the middle of them and remind them I am life. Forty minutes. Forty minutes. The longest show on, on Netflix is usually about forty minutes without any commercials. Forty minutes. Get all the commercials, you got an hour long, but without all commercials, it's about 38, 39, 40 minutes. Forty minutes. Listen.
God said, I'm going to take that 40 minutes of life. And I'm going to reverse the curse. Then I'm going to add 15 to it. I will make the devil get up every morning and say, my God, they woke up again. I'm going to do it for 15 years. I'm going to give you 15 years. It's so good that even when you snore, you're praying in the Holy Ghost. And you just erupt in hell. I'm going to give you 15 good years. Not so-so years. Not sometimes years. But I'm going to give you 15 good years. I'm going to take 40 minutes of your past. I'm going to remove it. And on the third day, my God, somebody hear me. I'm going to give you 15 good years. It's a miracle my voice has lasted this long, but God wanted this word out. Listen, all over this building, just bow your head. Just for a minute, just bow your head, close your eyes. Come on, Pastor, sing it. 